Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, my name's Tori. You're probably new, because I haven't posted a video in over a year, but we're back. To be honest, I was really just lacking ideas, motivation, but in the meantime, I've been over on TikTok, kind of sharing all my animals. And a lot of people find it super interesting, super informative, I like to make care guides, stuff like that. So if you don't already, go follow me over on TikTok at Tori's underscore exotics. But I've been saying over there for a while, I want to get back into making YouTube videos and sharing my pets with you guys on YouTube but regardless of all of that no need for a long intro I want to just start by making a video where I introduce you to all of my pets I have a lot of animals I have dogs cats birds reptiles amphibians there's a few animals that I won't be able to handle but I'll definitely show you pictures for example if they're shedding or they've recently eaten as well as I have some animals that are just unhandleable but this is gonna take some time so let's get straight into it but starting with some of my favourites, I hate to say favourites, but my dogs always do come first. I have two dogs. I have one Labrador who I won't be able to show in this shot, so I'll put a picture here. She is my pride and joy. She'll be three this year. Her name is Jem. She's a black Labrador. And I literally changed my life for this dog because when I got her, it was in lockdown. And then I never went back to my old job because I wouldn't leave my dog by herself. Sounds ridiculous to some people, but she is my pride and my joy. So yeah, I had to start with Jem. Next we have Tequila. So Tequila is a one year old Chihuahua, roughly one years old. I don't know her exact birthday, but she is the sweetest little thing. I like to bring her places in my handbag, which I used to like laugh at people for doing. And now I do all the time. And yeah, she's a little short haired, short haired Chihuahua and she's my baby. Next, I have my two cats, who again, I won't be able to hold and show you. They've been my children since I was a child. I will insert a picture of Honey here for you. I've had her the longest. She is about 10 years old. She's actually disabled and has detached hamstrings. However, she's still my child. And I literally love this cat. I've had her the longest out of all of my animals. And then I have Maple, who is a rescue. She was found in like some bushes locally to me and we took her in, I'd say about seven years ago. Next, I have my four quails. I promise I'll be showing you some animals real soon, but these are all like my unhandleable ones. I have four quails and they're named Eeny, Meeny, Miney and Egg. This is because I did have five. Unfortunately, one did pass away and that was Mo. Yeah, the names don't really make sense anymore. So they live outside. I have tried taming them down. However, I'll insert a clip of me trying to handle one and you'll see why they're not in this video. Next, let's move on to some of my reptiles. I'm gonna kind of start where I started in my journey of keeping reptiles and show you Dobby, who is my leopard gecko, who I got about four or five years ago and was my first ever personal lizard. For this, I have worked with reptiles. However, I've never owned any personally. And he literally changed my life because as you can see, I'm now obsessed. So this is Dobby, who is my leopard gecko. He is super, super handleable um, for anyone who's into reptiles and knows about morphs. He's a pretty standard leopard gecko. I didn't really know anything about morphs or the reptile world at all when I first got him, but he is so sweet. He's also tolerated me really learning about reptiles. I always say that I really recommend these guys as beginner pets. Obviously they still require a lot of time and research, but in terms of how hardy they are, are these guys like he's tolerated me making some bad mistakes but honestly he is the best boy if i ever have anyone over who wants to handle a reptile he's one of the first ones i'll go to grab he definitely has my heart although i feel like i'm going to say that about a lot of animals today next i have my bearded dragon astro who is my second ever reptile i love bearded dragons i don't really feel like they're as beginner friendly as some people make them out to be they're definitely a lot of work but she was my second ever reptile. I probably got her like three, four years ago. She is a Hypo Zero, which was the first ever like morph I ever knew about. I knew I wanted to be a dragon. And when I was doing my research, I loved like the all white ones. She's so friendly. I've had her since she was a tiny, tiny baby. She would literally just sit and chill on me all day. That is a good thing about bearded dragons is they are so friendly. I have some reptiles that we'll get into that would not ever tolerate this, let alone quite enjoy it. Like she will happily sit out with me. She lives up here in a four by two by two zen habitat. Again, she's one of my favorites. I had just Dobby and Astro for a long time in terms of reptiles before I then got into a bunch of other stuff and breeding and you know, 
we'll get into it but yeah so her and dobby i've had the longest but yeah this is miss astro this is where we're going to get rid of the chronological order thing because after this i did get my first crested gecko however i now have 12 crested geckos as i breed them so i'm going to show you all of those at the end and honestly after that it gets a bit confusing about what i brought home so i'm just going to run through the rest of my reptiles this is negan who is my aki monitor who is incredibly fast so i <laughs> He is a very friendly boy, but they're super, super active and he loves to jump on my hair, clearly. He was a rehome to me probably about a year ago now, maybe slightly less. He lives in a five by two by three enclosure. These guys need massive amounts of space. He is obviously named after Negan from The Walking Dead. I don't know who said having long hair and reptiles was a good idea, but I love him loads. He's super fun and interesting to watch and interact with. I will say he's not one of my most handleable reptiles so i'm gonna go pop him back next up is my northern blue tongue skink called toast toast i got when she was around two years old blue tongue skinks are an amazing kind of beginner friendly medium-sized lizard if you want something like a bearded dragon like the size wise but you don't want something as popular blue tongue skinks are an amazing alternative she is a bit hissy and huffy but she's fine once she's out of her enclosure she also lives in one of these four by two by twos behind me she is a bit hissy just because i didn't have her from a baby i did get her when she was around two so that just meant she wasn't really tamed down but i do find her super interesting to watch her diet is also really cool lots of people were surprised by how big she is she's definitely like two foot i do think they're kind of weird looking but i personally love that and yeah she is toast next up i'm not gonna handle these guys because they are still babies and they're so so tiny and i just don't trust myself but i have two emerald tree skinks called fred and george they're actually in this tank behind me but i'll insert some footage i'm actually going to be breeding these guys in the far far future but just because i think they're amazing lizards and they're really commonly wild caught cool. and i'm a big advocate for captive bred animals and also ethical breeding but as i said they're babies at the moment and this is a project for the way way future but they are so cute and so active and so fun to watch next let's talk about my snakes so a bit of a background story i had a snake years ago and to be honest with you guys he was super unfriendly he was a rescue and i was super nervous and just not capable at the time of taming him down it made me super scared of snakes i did end up rehoming him in the end and that's when i kind of got into lizards and i had lizards for years before i ever got a snake again but over the last year i got some new snakes i started off with one and he was amazing and just reminded me that one experience doesn't define a species and now i have four i obviously have some like beginner species because again as i said i've been building up my confidence but most recently i did get something a bit spicier and i'm a lot more confident than i ever was so first things first i have milkshake i can't actually show you milkshake today because he is so heavily in blue meaning he's about to shed any second and just holding him wouldn't be fair it would just be really uncomfortable for him so i'll like, put a picture of him here so he is a five-year-old milk snake He's actually a Honduran. Um, I'm not 100% sure of his backstory because he was rehomed to me as like a 40 year old, but he's really built my confidence up over the past year. I think he's an amazing, amazing snake. I definitely will if you guys wanna see more videos on my pets in the future, include him because he's so handleable, he's so friendly. I just can't handle him today. Then I also have another snake I can't show you today, unfortunately. She's a little tiny baby and she was fed yesterday. I'm always trying to film this video and there's never a day that I can show you everything. But she is a baby palmetto corn snake with bug eyes, meaning there's a deformity with her and her morph and she has abnormally large eyes. So she can't be bred. I had no plan on breeding her anyway. But yeah, she was fed yesterday and this is a picture of her. She is like a dream for me because I wanted a palmetto for a really, really long time. I was even talking about it on socials a lot and people were sending me links but I never could find one locally to me that I was happy with the breeder and they were all super expensive as well and I went to an expo a couple of months ago and found her and she had a condition and was so much cheaper but I just think it makes her super cute and it doesn't affect her in any way. Next in terms of snakes is my royal python. I think he's just under a year old and honestly my favourite favourite snake. I said it. I said said it he is probably my favorite saying that it does change all the time but he is just the sweetest most well-mannered snake same as dobby when it comes to friends coming over if somebody ever wanted to see a snake banoffee here is who i would go for so he is obviously a banana he is technically like a coral glow 
yellow belly. Honestly, I don't know all that much about ball python morphs. As you can see, he's probably about two and a half foot at the moment, I would say. But he has a lot of growing to do. But you can just see like how sweet he is and how much he'll just let you like He's just un- he remains unbothered. He would happily just sit and chill with me, whereas some of my other snakes definitely would not. He's super, super curious. He's never struck at me. He's a perfect feeder, which I know some people have some issues with royal pythons. I personally never have. I got him from a breeder super locally to me. And literally, he is my child. As I said, if anyone ever wants to hold a snake, I will always grab him and I'm never- worried at all some people always ask if they're mites and they're not mites so don't don't panic <laughs> i have mixed opinions on whether i recommend these as beginner snakes if they were all like banoffee though i definitely would but i know that some people do have some problems but yeah this is banoffee okay so last for snakes is prackham prackham is a hog island boa and is actually my most recent reptile ever. I only got him a couple of weeks ago. If I look a bit nervous, it is because he's a very spicy boy, so I'm trying to keep an eye on him while recording this. Obviously, I've only had him a couple of weeks. We've only been handling the last couple of days. I'm trying to get him out every day for 10 minutes or so. I can make a whole video about taming down snakes. So he is a hog island boa, meaning he won't get any more than about four feet as they are a dwarf species. And yeah, he was pretty expensive. I did buy him from a shop. They're not very like commonly found, but I'm definitely excited to working with him. I want to make sure he's super, super tame before he gets much bigger. He is just a wild type hog island boa. I don't think there's really any morphs. However, I just think he's absolutely stunning. He's sort of chilling out now, which is good. As I said, Said I like to sit and handle him for about 10 minutes a day and that's when he starts to settle down but he always does have one eye on me so anyone who says snakes aren't clever you're very very wrong his name is Prakem which actually comes from the dragon language in Skyrim which is my favorite video game I am literally just obsessed like I just keep showing the camera him <laughs> next up I have Dory who is also a leopard gecko I'm not able to handle Dory or show you but I will obviously insert some clips Dory actually does have neurological issues it does affect the way that she eats and moves and behaves and because of that she is very feisty she has bitten me a few times just because she doesn't really know the difference between me and food I've really struggled to kind of build any bond with her where she knows that I'm not gonna hurt her but she is the sweetest thing I will definitely insert some clips because honestly she has my heart she is so so sweet next and lastly in terms of reptiles is all of my crested geckos now I have 12 of these guys including the first babies that I've had hatched out this year I won't because it's just ridiculous to show you every single one of them but I will put some pictures up next to me this is one of my favorite babies phoenix she is of course a lily white she's absolutely gorgeous but yeah, I have nine adults and the rest are babies. I am a super small scale breeder and my website will be linked below for any that I have available. Also, I post a lot on my Instagram so you can message me over there. If I was to get all of them out, we would definitely be here all day. I also have some that are a lot less tolerable than my lovely Phoenix here, who still obviously has her moments. These guys are amazing beginner reptiles. If you do the research, I personally think they're one of the funniest fun animals out there they come in a ton of different morphs and colors and honestly they are stunning you can get like really spotty ones i'll show you some other ones as well let's not just show you phoenix but i am obsessed with her and i can't have favorites but this is phoenix sticking with the lily whites this is another one of mine he's still a baby he is also a super handleable i've had him since he was a baby and i handle him all the time so he's pretty happy with me but this is griffin i do think he is up there with the favorites but again as i said i've said that for every single animal as i said i love my spotty ones too and this is apollo who is a dalmatian i got last year he's definitely going to be a part of some breeding projects next year because i really do want to produce some dalmatians not everyone's a fan but i personally love them but i just love apollo and his little toe beans say hi <laughs> Honestly, I'm not going to keep pulling them all out. I feel like we'll be here all day, but I'll pop some pictures up on the screen for you. So I do have Comet, I have Venus, I have Nebula, I have Orbit, I also have Luna, I have Tarot, I have Pluto, and then I also have my babies. And for anyone interested in how small these guys come out the egg, these are already about a week old, so they were smaller. But this is one that hatched out about a week ago. I'm not gonna handle them for very long because they are so jumpy. I don't even know if you can see them. And I've probably woken him from a slumber and he probably wants to, yeah. 
<laughs> go ah yeah no we're not doing that today that is all of my reptiles moving on to my amphibians i have four frogs and two different species it is a note i never really handle these guys i am gonna show you but i am gonna wear gloves so in terms of my white tree frogs, I actually have three. This is Khaleesi, my medium sized frog. She is so cute. She's like a bluish color, but she's super chill. She's actually pretty happy to be handled. But as I said, I tend to just leave her alone. She does really well in her tank and she lives with two others, which I'll show you now. This is Tyrion, who is a male. So he is much smaller. He's a bit brown at the moment because he was hiding. However, he is gonna jump. He's a lot less happy to be handled. You just weed on me. That's Tyrion, basically. I don't really know what else to say. This last one is Drogon. Drogon is definitely a female. Drogon is massive. Drogon is literally the size of my hand. She eats like an absolute champ. And yeah, in comparison, I don't know really if the camera will pick it up, but she's a lot bigger than the other two. So that is my three white tree frogs. I did just have a good look around for Gus, who is my Pac-Man frog. However, I literally can't find him. If you've ever seen or owned a Pac-Man frog, they literally just bury themselves. And I'm not going to tear apart the whole enclosure looking for him, so I'm just going to leave him be, but I will insert a picture of him here. Only a baby, and I did put him in a pretty large enclosure, so I'm not really surprised I can't find him today. Wherever he's hidden, he's hidden good that is Gus my Pac-Man frog and last few bits now again I won't show you these guys just because it's the middle of the day and they're buried but I have two giant African land snail kind of babies they're definitely not fully grown that I picked up a couple of months ago from a reptile expo their names are Ben and Jerry proper cheesy corny name I know but honestly I didn't have any clue what to name them because I didn't really anticipate bringing them home they have quite a cool little greenhouse enclosure but they'll definitely need an upgrade in the future and honestly i enjoy keeping these guys a lot more than i kind of thought i would they weren't really something i dreamt of having but now that i have them they're actually so cool to like watch and they're actually a lot more active than i ever thought snails would be which is so weird yeah i actually love them they're really really cool and lastly trigger warning for spiders i need this trigger warning i don't really know why i did this to myself it's funny because i am quite scared of things that are quick i'm scared of insects that are loose i don't mind insects if i know that they're there it's when they jump out at me or i don't know they're there so for example when i'm feeding all of my reptiles i don't mind because i know where the feeders are but when one escapes and i see it when i'm not expecting it it makes me jump so a couple of months ago i decided i wanted to get into the world of spiders and arachnids i did want a jumping spider and the more i was looking into it the more that i was like these guys are too quick and too small i'm nervous and i moved on to the side of tarantulas and I ended up bringing home four. The reason I did this is because I bought tiny little babies. Three of them are dwarf species and one is not. I will show you them all. However, there is a chance they might not all survive. So I kind of wanted to get a few. I mean, fingers crossed so far, they've been doing great. I've had them a few weeks, but I will openly say that if I see any of them missing at any point, I will move out especially when they're like grown up which overall is just a bit stupid for me to really own spiders but if you do want to shop where i shopped i do have a link for the spider shop that i'll put in the description they do sell feeders they sell spiders tarantulas other inverts as well i'll show you what i got i'll at least show you the pots and then i'll kind of put a pi picture on the screen of what it will look like so this is my little pot of tarantulas you may be thinking they're being kept in really small enclosures i can't stress to you enough how small they are i've actually thought i've either lost or killed two already because they're just so tiny that i can't see them a couple of them will take a very long time to grow and then a couple of them will be a year or two but they'll slowly upgrade from an enclosure this sized to an enclosure this sized sized or side size this size to this size this is actually the one i originally wanted this one kind of started it all essentially this is a love butt tarantula this is what she'll look like i won't try and pronounce the latin names by the way just because i'll just butcher it so essentially this is the one that i wanted to get and to start and she was only like five pound and then the delivery was like 30 pound for a live animal and then i was like what if it doesn't make it like what if i mess it up next thing i know i brought home four tarantulas so that's the tea but she's doing great i've actually printed off tiny little labels for these which i think is super cute this one is a pumpkin patch very similar will stay quite small this was kind of my second one that i was interested in i follow a few people that own these and started with these the third one i got 
is also a dwarf species. These just came in like a pack of like three. It sounds crazy saying pack of three for a live animal, but you know what I mean. So there was like three dwarf species for a certain price. So this is a pygmy fire leg. I actually thought these were really cute. And this one is super active as well. Like always like webbing and I always can see him in there. And then lastly, I don't really know what was going through my head with this one, to be honest with you. <laughs> I, I have no words. I don't really know what to say. And it is a Mexican red knee, which is a lot bigger than all the other ones, although it's the same age. You probably still won't be able to see it, so I'll give you a picture of what it will look like full grown, which is so, so scary to me. <laughs> Again, I'm kind of hoping the same with my snake fear, if you want to call it that, that watching a spider grow with me in terms of my confidence will help. Honestly, if this ever gets out in my house, I'm going to move out. Maybe it was a touch irresponsible of me to get an animal I'm actually pretty scared of. But I wanted to give it a try, you know? Okay guys, I think that might just be all of my pets. I feel like we've been here all day. I feel like we've been on this journey together. I feel like I've been filming this for about four hours. <laughs> I'd really love to make some more pet content on this channel. So let me know if you'd be interested because it is what I'm really passionate about. However, thank you for sticking to the end if you did. I promise I will come through with some more content, but do let me know what you want to see. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.